I've really, really taken this internal and decided that I'm not gonna listen to the external noises and voices. I'm really just gonna listen to my body. And I think that's the best thing that any woman can do. All right, you guys, welcome back to another Lady Savage video. I have gotten this question so stinking much, and it is what modifications have I done to my workouts to make it through this pregnancy without really any complications or any issues? So first I'd like to start off by saying I have been very blessed with this pregnancy. I do not feel like I have had to do a lot of modifications. Um, we're at 32 weeks right now, so we have about eight weeks to go. Um, and I felt like it was a good time to go ahead and introduce this because I don't see a lot changing in the next eight, 10 weeks or so. A few things that I have actually had to start adjusting very early on was like breathing, breathing and heart rate. So when you're pregnant, you're going to naturally need more oxygen. Your blood system is actually pumping more blood through your body and to your baby as well. So you're going to run out of oxygen a little bit more easily, get out of breath a little bit more easily. Um, and you might notice that your heart rate has increased. Um, I've had a lot of people ask me if I track my heart rate through my workouts, if I worry about that, and I really, really don't. You're going to notice that I'm going to say a lot, um, I listen to my body. That is my ground rule, is to always listen to my body. And I'm not trying to follow all of these rules that are out there on the internet or people tell you to do or not to do. Um, I've really, really taken this internal and decided that I'm not gonna listen to the external noises and voices. I'm really just gonna listen to my body. And I think that's the best thing that any woman can do. So for breathing, um, a lot of times what I would usually do for like instance, like a deadlift or a squat is I would take a big breath in hold it, do my movement, and then take a breath when I got back to like a relaxed state um, or between sets, or between reps, I'm sorry. And with pregnancy, you're not really supposed to hold your breath. It's not the best idea to hold your breath, um, especially under a lot of strain. So I really had to learn to breathe through each movement rather than holding my breath um, or using that pressure with my core. So. Usually when you're holding your breath um, for a movement like deadlifts or squats, you are holding your breath, you're tightening your core, and then you go down, you do the movement, and you come back up, you take another breath, you do it again. Um, so you really have to find a balance between holding your core tight while also breathing the entire movement. So that has been a little bit of an adjustment, but it's been pretty easy. I, I really started doing that in the first trimester just to make sure that oxygen was flowing the whole time, that the blood was moving the whole time. So um, now that we're at 32 weeks, it's been super easy. I'm super, super adjusted to doing it. But in the first trimester, it was a little bit of a struggle. <laughs> um, so that would be my number one thing that I have adjusted. Um, another thing is going to be if you want to, if you're someone who's used to like doing supersets, um, that is something that I got used to not doing as much of because I was finding myself more out of breath. Uh, my heart rate was increased. I will set myself up with a superset, so moving back and forth from one movement to the next, to the next, to the next, without really much of a break in between. That's my normal kind of go-to. Um, but I decided to set myself up with the superset, but if I needed a break between those, to just take it. Take an extra second to breathe. If you need to sit down, sit down for a second. Um, I really, again, just listened to my body. Set yourself up for the exercises you want to do, but don't be afraid to take a second in between and allow your body to rest and recover. Um, another thing that I really noticed is your body produces more and more relaxin as you get towards the end of your pregnancy. And relaxin really literally relaxes your joints um, so that your pelvic muscle or your pelvic joints um, are, are able to kind of loosen up to get that baby out of there when it's time to birth. So it is getting gradually harder and harder for those joints and ligaments and everything to be as tight. So you might notice different changes in your hips, in your, um, you know, like the 
bottom of your spinal cord or the spinal column, uh, knees, it, it, and all of those joints that are used to just being real strong and sturdy, you might no, like tend to notice that they're not as sturdy anymore or that they might actually hurt or ache when you do certain movements. So that's a sign that you should not be doing that movement or maybe not going as heavy. Which leads me into talking about the amount that I am lifting. So people ask me a lot of times, like, are you lifting the same? Um, how much should you be lifting? What's the percentage that you should be lifting compared to your max lifts? And again, I'm not following a certain plan. I'm not following some guideline that someone gave me. I'm listening to my body. And over time, I've probably lifted a little bit less and less um, over the, the trimesters. The first trimester, practically the same. There was like no difference at all. Second trimester, we started to get a little bit lighter with the weight that I was using. Um, primarily with my larger compound movements, everything upper body has really stayed the, the same. Uh, shoulder press, chest press, all of that kind of stuff pretty much stayed the same. But like my deadlifts, my squats, those type of movements that use a lot more of my lower body or my back, um, I've definitely gotten a little bit lighter. I would say it is less than or more than 50%. I'm probably going 70% of what I was doing before. Um, and I feel really good there. Um, I've stayed consistent. I have chosen numbers that I would like to keep. Um, I would like to not go less than. And I have just decided that those are the numbers I'm going to go for. If I can't hit them, I'm not going to go crazy and lose my mind trying to lift these weights that my body should not be lifting right, right now. Um, so number one thing, of course, like I said, is to listen to your body. People are going to try to convince, people have tried to convince me, I shouldn't say they're going to try to convince you. People have tried to convince me that I should stop lifting or stop lifting as heavy or follow some sort of protocol or whatever. And I've really found that I have been the most successful by doing my own thing, by doing what feels good for my body. Um, and the other adjustments, I'm gonna show you guys in just a moment, um, some of the other adjustments that I've made, and they're really minor. There's, there's not a lot of changes that are going on, um, but I will show you guys those in just a sec. Uh, but those first ones are the ones that I think are best paid attention to things like breathing, um, you know, taking time in between, things like that, and that's where it takes such a toll and you need to listen to your body during that time. So let's hit some of these movements and I'll show you guys what I've really adjusted. Okay, so for this movement, um, it's gonna be the same for the cable as well as the barbell row, things like that. My belly has started to get in the way of me doing these movements, so as you'll notice, as I bring this back, I can't go far enough back with my arms. That feels good. I can't get quite the squeeze that I want to get before I start to hit my belly. So instead of doing this movement and only being able to do half of it, um, I will either keep just this attachment or att attach just like a single handed one. Um, I flip this one inside out and then I'll just do a single row and then I can pull this back a lot easier, um, getting a lot better grip on that and getting a much better back workout. So I will do that and then I will switch sides. So that way I'm just avoiding hitting my stomach at all costs because it doesn't feel very good and it's not very good for your stomach either. So um, that's what I do. The same thing goes for the barbell. When you're doing a bent over barbell row, you just are not gonna be able to bring the barbell up as high. So rather than using the barbell, using something like a dumbbell and doing a single arm row or um, even doing um, where you're just using one hand and pulling that barbell up and you're still bent over in the bent over position you can do it wide or you can do it right down to the side too so those are really helpful for when I'm trying to do my back workouts and belly's getting in the way um, shoulder exercises those are pretty much the same but let's go do some chest exercises and things that would involve laying down okay so a big, big no-no in pregnancy is laying flat on your back when you're doing an exercise. When I was going through school for personal training, they always told you, do not let a woman who is pregnant lay flat on her back. Um, and this can be true for a lot of women, but it is actually not true for me so far in my pregnancy. Um, and the reason for this can be because 
when you're laying flat on your back, sleeping, exercising, doing whatever, um, your, your uterus is getting heavier and heavier and it has a baby in it and so it's laying flat on this uh, vein that's back there that um, circulates all of your blood, the blood to the baby, things like that. So you really wanna make sure that you're avoiding laying on that vein. Um, but that isn't an issue. A lot of times it happens with um, people who have are, were already a little bit heavier before pregnancy, um, and and it can happen to really anyone, but I've just been really lucky so far that we haven't had any issues with that at all. Um, so I continue to do my exercises. If that is an issue for you, what you can do rather than what I have done um, is actually put the, the, put the um, bench at an incline, and you're not gonna be laying flat on your back. So you can still lay on your back, but it needs to be in a, at an incline. Um, for me, I am laying straight on my back, but this is one of the only movements that I'm really laying on my back. Um, so I really, really don't mind it at all. And it's something that I really wanted to be able to continue through my pregnancy. So we're gonna do the chest press. So first things first is normally when I'm doing the chest press, my feet are flat on the ground. Um, but with this pregnancy, because it causes so much stretch in my stomach, I end up bringing my knees up on the bench, which seems to be working just fine. It'll be a little bit of an adjustment to put them back on the ground afterwards, but um, it's been really helpful for me to bring my knees up onto the bench. So the way that I actually get down rather than flopping down on the bench is I grab the bar and then I put one hand under one knee and I do one movement all at the same time. There's no pressure on my core at all right now. So I pull myself down and I get in position and then I do my movement. And I put this back up and then I grab the bar and you can swing to the side or you can swing forward. That's the best way I found for me and really it's doing the whole movement all at the same time using your extremities to lift yourself back rather than trying to put all the pressure on your core to get yourself back. So that's been really, really helpful for me doing bench press. Um, and you can even use that up until about 20 weeks when they start to suggest that you don't lay on your back. You can do that through your whole first trimester and even into your second trimester. If it becomes an issue with you and your um, blood circulation and things like that, then change to an incline. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys a couple of other, or just one more other um, back exercise that if you are daring or want to, you can. I'll show you a couple of different ways that I've gotten up and down um, from this because when you don't have a barbell or something to rest your weight on or get back into that lying position, um, it gets a little bit harder the larger your stomach gets and the more pressure you'll have on your core. So I'm gonna pretend we're doing a, a dumbbell press or a fly. Um, and how I get up and down. So what you can do is get to the side, put your elbow down and then lay like this and then roll over, put your feet up. Okay, once you're in this position, you're gonna be kind of stuck and not know what to do. So what you can do is either drop the weights, roll to the side, and lift yourself up like that, or you can do the other one. The other one's a little bit more uh, risky, but it's doable. So your exercises, and then you go move the weight toward your knees and do a lift, like lift yourself up at the same time. So one, two, three, and you're really, you're tightening your core, but you're not using a ton of the core. I used to use that one a lot more, and now I really just drop the weights. If you can, if you have someone to help you, lay down first and have them hand you the weights. If you don't have someone available, that's the best way of doing it. Um, and then another thing is just, if you can't do the laying down, if it's too much, then just do the incline. You don't have to avoid these movements altogether. Just do the incline, it's so much easier to lay back and get yourself right back, right back up. So that's it for that one. All right, so the next two things I wanted to talk about is they're super simple. They're pretty much no brainers. Um, when your belly starts to get in the way, when you're doing deadlifts or squats or something like that, 
Um, the only thing I would do different is a wider stance. I have continued to do deadlifts, sumo deadlifts, squats, all of those movements, and the only thing I've done is widen my stance, make sure my toes are pointed outward, um, and that is it. That really is all that I've done to those movements because they still feel really great. Squats are so, so, so good for you when you're pregnant and preparing for childbirth. They actually encourage you to do squats, whether it be body weight squats or with a dumbbell or a goblet squat or with a barbell, whatever you are used to doing. So I've kept those up, just a wider stance, and that is it. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is core movements. Because you have this big thing right here, um, your ab muscles are starting to separate and that's just gonna naturally happen because it needs to make room for a baby. So um, your ab muscles are going to start to separate, but there is a point where you're over separating your ab muscles and I'm gonna butcher how to say it properly because I just can't ever get it, um, but it's diastasis recti. Something along those lines, you guys know what I'm talking about. It's a weird word. Um, but that is where it's almost like a permanent separation in your ab muscles. And even after you give birth, you still have that separation. So that's something that we really, really want to avoid in pregnancy is putting too much pressure on the core. We want to be able to bring it in tight and keep it really, really tight rather than letting it loose, never tightening it, letting your belly hang all the time, and, um, and then doing movements that are straining those muscles and pulling them apart. So how do you know when you're straining those muscles and pulling them apart rather than bringing them in? Um, so when you're straining that, you're going to see more of a cone-like shape when you do an, a movement. So even things like getting out of bed, lifting up after laying down, you'll see a cone-like movement. And so what you really wanna do is turn over to your side and lift yourself up using your arms, swinging your legs down, things like that. So things that you want to avoid are gonna be like hanging leg raises, lying leg raises. Um, planks are okay, but most of the time they prefer that you don't do regular planks, that you do either at an incline or just the side planks. Um, anything that's going to bring that cone-like shape to your belly, you really, really want to try to avoid. So some of the things I do in place of some of those exercises that I used to do are like bird dogs. Um, they even call this one like um, hug the baby, like hug your baby, and you're just really pulling your core in tight. Um, you can do farmer's carries. You can do um, the side planks. You can do... I mean, there's so many different movements that you can do, but what you're really wanting to do is support your core and support your pelvic floor as well. Um, so even with all the other movements with chest press and squats and deadlifts, you should not be letting your belly hang and just be loose. You always, 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 pregnant or not, want to keep that core super tight. So you're bringing it in, you're tightening everything in from the inside out, your pelvic floor you wanted to have a good grip on, and this is gonna help you a lot with not having um, as much you know, peeing yourself or th some of those pelvic floor issues that people talk about. It may not prevent it completely, but it will help along the way. So you wanna lift up that pelvic floor, tighten your core muscles, and then do those movements and avoiding that cone shape because we don't want to separate those ab muscles more than they're already going to be separated. So that is pretty much it for today's video. I, again, you guys will notice that I really don't do a lot of different modifications. I'm not doing anything crazy. There's no pr perfect program that you need to follow for your, for your body. Everybody's body is different. Everyone's pregnancy is different. Mine is going to be different from the next. I just wanted to share with you guys my experience, what I've gone through, what it's kind of looking like um, as someone who was lifting before to someone who's going to be lifting after, um, what I've done through this whole transition and really how little it's changed. But you have to make some different modifications through it just so that you're not, again, like pulling your ab muscles apart or putting too much strain or stress on your body or on the baby. Um, and making sure that the blood is flowing properly, oxygen is flowing properly, all of those things. They're super important, but just minor, minor modifications. And the biggest thing I want to share with you guys, again, is just listen to your body. 
that's all you have to do. There's no perfect program. There's no perfect book. There's no doctor. There's no person that's going to tell you exactly how to do things for your body. Um, if I had listened to a lot of people, I would have stopped working out. If I had listened to a lot of people, I would have stopped doing a lot of the exercises that I'm doing and still feeling great with. Um, so just listen to your body, listen to yourself. You have a natural instinct that tells you what to do and what not to do. Listen to those and don't push yourself too far past that limit. Um, and just give yourself a little bit of grace during this process. It is a process, so just give yourself a little bit of grace. And that's it. I'll see you guys for the next video.